Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. A few weeks back, a lady came into the shop and gave me this roll of fabric. And I think this is the wrong side. And that's the right side. Absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Now she gave me the fabric, doesn't want anything for it. And I even offered to make her a bag of some sort out of this fabric or even give her something else but she doesn't want anything at all i'm very appreciative of this piece it's absolutely gorgeous and today we're going to make a duffel style bag out of this fabric i think both sides can be usable i'm not really sure i'm going to have a think about that but i'm thinking that i'll have one side as the main part of the bag and the other side it might be some contrast pockets. We'll see if that's going to work and we'll try and have as little wastage as possible out of this piece. Let me see if I can reach into my future self and see what the bag looks like. Okay, here it is. This is absolutely huge. That's what we'll be making today. I'm going to show you how I go about working out how to design this project as well i have an idea in my mind so i thought i'd show you what thought processes i go through to get something like this happening as well come along i love playing with paper so whenever i'm working on a new design or something that i've never made before i'll use butcher's paper or just a normal lightweight interfacing and i'll make my patterns out of that so in my mind at the moment, I'm thinking that I'd like a bag that's about 12 inches high. So I'm cutting up some strips that are going to be the sides of my bags. I'll tape it back together again and those will be my seams. So I don't really have a plan at the moment. I'm just sort of playing around and working out what I can do with the paper. Once I've got a general idea in mind, I can start adding measurements to it. So here I'm working out how the sides are going to go together. And I think I'm happy with the box, so I'll just take my measurements. I want to have some pockets in this bag as well. In fact, I'm going to have lots of pockets in there. So I'm just marking some areas where I think I want my pockets. And if I'm happy with the look of everything, then I can start taking some measurements. I've decided the base of the bag was a little bit too big rather than cutting up extra bits of paper. So I'm just folding the edges over on the base, making any adjustments that I want to make, working out what size I want my pockets to be. I want to try and use up the corners of the fabric that I'll be cutting out as well. So my aim is to use those for the pockets. So I need to make sure the sides and the base of my bag are big enough that I can put decent sized pockets in. I'll draw a little mud map on my paper here, working out the measurements and working out how much fabric I'm going to need for this project as well. Generally, this is what I do most days when I'm creating a new project that I haven't worked on before. And this big roll is the Peltex that I use. It's non-fusible. I haven't had access to any fusible product for quite some time. It's just by pure chance that the paper that I've played around with has ended up working out a perfect size for the width of the Peltex that I have. I didn't take that into account when I first started. So fortunately everything's going to fit and I don't have to muck around with the pattern anymore. And this is the fun part. This is when I can actually start working out how much fabric I need and putting everything together. Whilst you're looking at this, I might as well put the measurements on the screen for all the material that you're going to need. The measurements that you can see on the screen are the finished measurements after I've quilted the fabric. And you'll see at the end of the video how big the handles are compared to the bag. You may decide you want them a little bit longer, but the measurements on the screen now are the measurements for the handles that I've used. You don't have to use stiff Peltex. It'll be a lot easier to turn this bag the right way out and even to sew it at the machine if you use a soft fleecy product rather than the stiff Peltex that I've used. So if you're using a domestic machine, that'll probably be much easier for you. All right, after working all of that out, here's my little mud map that I've made of the size of fabric and what I'm going to need. Now, just for the moment, I'm working in inches. I've decided my fabric piece is going to be 47 inches across and 35 inches in one whole piece. My sides will be about 12 inches by 11 inches high. That will bring the overall length of the bag down to about 23 inches. The height will be about 12 inches and the depth across will be about 11 inches. Give or take a few discrepancies with my cutting and seam allowance. So that then means that my zip that I'll need will need to be at least 23 inches long. I'll cut that to size later. I'm going to be using this webbing for the handles. 
So what we've got is a continuous zip. You can use a regular zip if you want to. Uh, I'm using webbing for my handles. This is a piece of fabric that I've got for my lining. It just happens to be the perfect size for the piece of fabric that I've got cut here. And I've got my piece of upholstery fabric here and I've got a big piece of Peltex. So this is a really stiff stabilizer. I would have liked this to be an iron-on one, but I don't have any, which now means that I have to go and quilt this to this piece. And this is the reason why I haven't given you cutting measurements just yet, because I've got this oversized, this is oversized, as well as my lining. I'm going to quilt it all, and then I'll cut everything to the sizes that I need. So let me get this together with this, I'll go and quilt it and then I'll be back. Give me a couple of hours. All right, here's the full piece of fabric that we've got to work with. It's been quilted. All I've done is a heap of diagonal lines that are two inches apart. I was going to go back and do it the other way, but I really can't be bothered. This took me too long as it was. To start with, we've got our outer piece of fabric and our batting and our fabric all cut to the same size. So the size we have for our fabric now is 47 inches wide by 35 inches long. So that's 120 by 89 centimetres. What I want to do now is fold this piece of fabric in half. I'm going to turn it around. So right now I've got 47 inches this way and 35 this way or 120 by 89 centimetres. Using the widest part here which is the 47 inches we're going to fold our fabric in half and when you fold this in half this will measure 17 and a half inches by 47 inches I've got my lining my batting and my outer fabric all sandwiched together. This is just so that I can cut everything out all at once. We've got the raw edges at the top here, the fold at the bottom, and I've got 17 and a half inches by 47 inches. From the raw edge, I'm going to measure 12 inch or 30 centimeters. And from this edge, I'll do the same. And I'll be marking a big square out in this corner and I'll do the same in the opposite corner as well. So right here, I've got a 12 by 12 inch square or 30 by 30 centimeters, and we're going to cut that out. Before I do that, I'll do the same marking right at the other end. And now I can cut out these two big squares. Don't throw these away because we'll be using them. And I do like to double check that I've got the same size corners cut out. So what you can see now is we've got the folded bag here with our little wings on the side. If you take these wings and fold it up at the point, your side edges should match up. And that's what's gonna give you your nice boxed corners. This will be the height of our bag here, this will be the base of our bag, and this will be the sides. We can set the lining aside for the time being, and we'll take our main piece of fabric. From the outside edge here to here, we're going to mark a straight line. And we'll do that on all four sides. And then we want to find the center position. At the moment, I've got 23 inches across here. It's easier for me to work with inches because I can see the numbers better on my ruler. So half of that is 11 and a half inches. I'll just make a mark right in the center here. I'll do that on this side as well. Okay, we've got those markings made. Let's set this aside for the time being and we can grab our pockets. So what you will have is four square pieces with the outer fabric being quilted and then your lining fabric as well. So what I'd like to do here with each of these pieces, we can square this up later as well. So we're just going to sew it together. Take your lining 
and we're going to place that with the right sides facing. I guess since I've quilted this, I'll want to line up my pockets so that the quilting lines kind of match up with what I've got on my bag. So take your lining and just pin or clip one edge together. All right, so here's my bag pieces. This is going to be a pocket piece for this side part. I've got my quilting lines going in the same direction along here. I've clipped my fabric together on one edge and I've done the same for the other three as well. So my quilting lines going in the same direction for all of those. Let's take this to the machine. We're going to sew across here with a one centimeter seam. When you've done that, that one centimeter seam will allow you to have a small fold along the top edge of the fabric. So if we flip this over, you'll have your stitching line right along underneath here. And then we will flip that back even further. And we're going to have a one centimeter or three eighth inch fold across the top. And this is just to break up the fabric, give it a little bit of contrast against the main body of your bag. I probably could have gone with a much nicer fabric, but this will have to do. So let's sew straight across here with our one centimeter or three eighth inch seam allowance. When we've done that, whilst we're at the machine, we'll just flip the fabric over and then we'll stitch that in place on the other side. I really dislike sewing with the lining at the top. So the next one, I'm going to sew along the top of the stabilized fabric. The reason I don't like to sew with the lining at the top is because it has a tendency to shift. There's not enough stability in the fabric. So where you can see the lining hasn't extended beyond the fabric here, on this one it has because it's just shifted as I've sewn. Flip the fabric around and bring it to the back and you can see there's a nice little bit of binding, I guess, at the top of the fabric, which is the lining that's on the back. Make sure your lining is sitting to the back and now we can go and stitch in the ditch all the way to the other side. And there you've got a nice little bound edge to the top of our pocket. We'll do that for the others as well. And the remaining two I will do with the stabilized fabric at the top. Okay, so all of the pockets are almost ready to be cut to size now. So we've got our little bound edge at the top here. You'll see that the lining is way too short for the back. That's not an issue because we were going to cut these down anyway. This is one of the sides of our bag and this pocket is going to sit around about here. So we can cut them all down to size now. Double check our measurements. The two center ones, we can leave them as wide as they are but the ones on the ends are going to need to be trimmed in width as well as height, whereas these ones will only need to have their heights chopped off. Okay, so here's what I've done. For the end pieces of the bag, I've trimmed the sides to 11 inches and the height to nine inches. Left the lining along the back and cut the lining and the outer fabric to the same nine inch length and it's 11 inches across. So we need two of those. And then we need to, I've left the width, so that was 12 inches. I've also trimmed that back to nine inches. So we've got two pockets that are 12 by nine and another two pockets that are 11 by nine. The next thing we're going to do is take the lining and bring that to the front. And this gets a little bit tricky here. This long edge here, you want to line up with the long edge along here and you'll sew that in place along that long edge. When you've done that, you're going to end up having a piece of fabric that looks like this. So I've stitched that long edge. This is the top where we've got the bound edge. After we've sewn the long edge, you can just turn everything the right way out. And this is the bound edge that we did earlier. Along the bottom here, 
you want to fold the fabric over so that the lining sits to the back and that's how it'll end up looking so it'll end up flattening out again let's take these to the machine we'll sew the bottom edges then we'll turn them the right way around and clip them together once again I'll work with the stabilized side faced up and I'll use the same one centimetre or 3 8 inch seam allowance. I finished closing up the bottom edges of these four pocket pieces. So we still have the raw edges on both sides. I've gone and clipped the edges together and there's quite a lot of bulk here so if you feel as though you need to go and do a row of top stitching it's up to you you can go and do that but we are going to do two rows of top stitching when we put this into our bag which is what we can do now so let's grab our two uh, narrower pieces the 11 inch pieces and we're going to place them on each side of the side section of our bag so we've got our drawn line across here we're going to line up the pocket along this side edge but we're not going to line it up right along the very bottom because when we put the corners together later there's going to be lots of bulk we'll bring that up three centimeters or one and a quarter inches from that line that we marked earlier and we can clip those edges in place so what we're going to do here is along the bottom edge because there's so much bulk we're going to do two rows of top stitching and we're going to do them about a quarter of an inch away from each other so if you look at the pocket on the back of your jeans you'll see two rows of stitching it's just going to be the same as that and then once you've done that you can sew up the side seam and that's really just so that we can put the pockets in place and they're not flapping about on us at the opposite end we'll do the same thing place the bottom edge of the pocket three centimeters from the bottom lining up that side as well and then we can take our bigger pocket pieces and we'll do the same here so fold this in half find the center and line that up with the mark you've made here we'll also position that three centimeters from the line we've marked and you'll need to pin this securely in place and with the other side we'll do the same once again we'll find the center okay with all of our pockets lined up now we're going to go along the bottom edge of each one of them twice and then when you've done the bottom edge you can just sew up the side on all of them this will be a little bit awkward because there's so much bulk and our bag is really big but just do the best you can. Once that first row is done, you can go back and do the second one. And I'm just going to use the edge of my foot as my stitching guide. So I'll run the edge of the foot along the seam that I've already sewn. And that should keep me nice and straight. With that done I'll turn the pocket around and then I'm just going to sew up the edge of the pocket just to secure it to the fabric. And I'll do the same for the other side of the pocket. There's no seam allowance here if this is going to be covered by our handles later so just go close to the edge. And this is one of the pockets on the side. For all four sides, we'll just do exactly the same. All right, so I've done two sides. I'll go and finish the other two and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so here's our pockets. They're all finished on all four sides of our bag. Before we can start putting the sides together, we need to put our handles on and I'll be using this one inch wide webbing. 
I'll measure how much I need in a moment but basically what we're doing is we're going to be covering the end of our pockets on the front and back of our bag with this webbing that'll come across the bottom of our bag here go on along to the other side of our handles and come up and around and loop around like this so we're going to have a continuous handle all in one piece we'll have the join at the bottom here somewhere let's turn this around whilst I measure how much fabric I'm going to need for the handles and I'll tell you what I've forgotten to do when I was playing around with this pattern I've worked out what I need to have the correct rise on the sides and on the end but I've forgotten to take into account that I need something at the top of my bag so we're going to make a separate gusset for that for the zip to go in that should solve that problem that was a silly oversight I'm so used to making box bags that I didn't even give that a thought let's get back to our handles you'll of course have all the dimensions up on the screen already so you know that there's a gusset at the top this is the front and the back and the base of our bag from one end to the other this measures 35 inches and I'm also going to add another 20 inches for the loop of one handle so 35 inches plus 20 that's 55 inches which is about a meter 40 and I need to double that as well so we want 110 inches of webbing or 2.8 meters I've cut my webbing to length I'm going to seal the ends with a flame and that will stop them from fraying which will enable me to butt the ends together at the base of the bag let's find the center of our bag so we've got our existing line that we made earlier along here and another one along here let's find the center of those two lines which should be 11 inches because that's the base of our bag half of that is five and a half inches and that's where I'm going to butt the two ends of my webbing together grab your handle fabric place the two raw edges together and find the center at the other end pop a pin in the center there you also want to find the center at the other end take the center of your webbing and place that over that line we've marked and line the um, strap up so that it sits halfway over the raw edge there bring that straight up over the edge of your pocket keeping your handle nice and straight so that it's not twisted bring it around to the other side and line up this raw edge with that other mark we've made position your webbing so that the raw edge of the pocket is in the middle of your strap there and continue on from here all the way up the other side and once again make sure your handle's not twisted as you come around and meet up with the other end and if you're happy with that you can go and sew all the way down both long edges of your webbing now if your pockets are out of alignment a little bit and mine are I'm actually going to bring the center across a little bit and I really just didn't cover my pockets enough that's all and just realign everything until it looks nice and straight now when we sew this in place we're not going to sew all the way to the very top edge because we've still got that gusset to put in so we're going to stop two and a half centimeters or one inch from that top edge there I'll mark that with a pin so that I know that I'm stopping there I'll come up along here back stitch along here and then come back down the other side and keep on going till I get to the other end and do the same thing so on each end it'll be one inch or two and a half centimeters on both sides and where the join is in the webbing here I'll do a little box around that as well once you're happy with the placement of your handles double check that everything lines up on each side so just bring the side edges together line up the outside edge come across and double check that the back and front of the handle line up here and keep on going making sure that the ends line up that your handle straps line up as well and if you're happy with all of that we can sew it in place I've removed my pins and put a strip of double-sided tape underneath this just to keep it in place it really doesn't matter where you start but I'm going to start at the top of the handle it's 
just such a big awkward project to work with that this seems to be the most comfortable place. I'll go forward, back and then forward and that'll secure the top edge of that handle really well. When you're coming down along the inside, we're going to have a lot of excess bulk here because of the pocket being over the strapping. I'm going to go over this section a few times. And at the bottom of the pocket, I'll do the same. All right, that's one side done, but because there's so much bulk along here, I'm going to do this pocket section just on the inside of the webbing again. And I'll repeat that for all four sides of the pockets. This is a very cumbersome bag to try and get the strapping on at the moment. On this side I'm going to start at the base and I'll start on the inside. There's no reason for it, it's just where I am. And because I can't get the rest of my fabric underneath my throat space here, I'm going to turn my bag around this way and I'll go backward and I think I'll finish here and start at the other end. I'll go and finish the rest and be right back. Well that was a little bit tedious. There's so much bulk in the fabric here and because I'm using upholstery fabric and the stiff Peltex as my stabiliser, it's very difficult to try and manipulate the fabric to get underneath your machine. So it's done now, I don't have to worry about it. And you can see along the side here, we've left a good gap at the top there so that we can still put our top gusset in, which is what we're going to work on now. All right, so what I've done for the top of the bag, I have to quilt the piece at the top. So I'm going to get another bit of Peltex, place that behind my outer fabric, and I'll go and quilt this the same way I've quilted the rest of the bag, just with some two inch diagonal lines. The piece that I've cut out here is 13 by 25 inches or 33 by 63 centimeters. It's bigger than what I need, but I wanna do the quilting first and then cut the fabric to size. We'll also be cutting it in half later for the zip, but it's much easier to quilt first. And like I did earlier, I'm running some double-sided tape along the wrong side of my fabric, and that will help me keep my Peltex in place. Nice, quick, cheats way of securing my fabric. All right, I have quilted my fabric, and I've also gone and cut this down to the final size that I need, as well as cutting my lining at the same time. So what we need for our outer fabric and our lining is 11 and a quarter inches by 23 inches or 28 and a half by 58 and a half centimeters and our zip will be placed in the center here I've gone and cut a zip a little bit longer than what I need this is my number five and I've grabbed a couple of sliders as well I've cut my zip to about 24 inches in length let's fold our lining piece in half lengthwise and we'll find the center and we'll mark that center Grab your outer fabric, place the lining over the top, line that up evenly, and you can mark that entire center line right across. And you can go and cut that out now. If you have scissors, just cut it with your scissors. Pin the layers of fabric together first so they don't shift. But if you do have a rotary cutter and a ruler, that'll be much easier. And now we can put our zip in. 
I'll be using my double sided tape as usual along the top edge of this gusset piece. I'll do that for both pieces and then I'll place my zip faced down over the top. This is where I will remove the other side. Now if you're working with a regular zip that is joined all you need to do is separate until you get to the end of the zip and place the other side on the other piece of fabric. So just imagine that this is still joined over the other end and you can still put it together. I'm going to separate that completely. Of course if you're using a regular zip you're going to need to use one that's a few inches longer than what we need just to make it easier to use. Okay with that done I'll run some more tape and then I can place my lining over the top. Let's sew these two in place and when we do that we'll sew with the stiff side facing up. With that done I'm going to separate the lining and place that along the back and we need to top stitch our fabric but there's a lot of stiffness in here so I'm going to top stitch twice. I've got the lining behind the outer fabric and I'll do a row of stitching close to the edge and then I'll do another row of stitching beside that. So the next row is probably about an eighth of an inch away or three or four millimetres. And repeat for the other one. Alright there's our gusset finished and we can put our sliders on. So to put your sliders on line up the edge of your gusset and line up the edge of your zip as well. There are several ways of putting your slider on. Some people like to chop down into the zipper teeth and put it on that way. I don't see the need for that. As long as you've got your fabric lined up straight here you can cut your zip so that it is straight. You want the teeth lined up at the top. Grab one of your sliders and with the curved edge facing you, place one side over the top. Just let it sit there and meet some resistance. Then put this side in and you want the top edge of the teeth lining up, which will also line up the straight edge of your fabric. You'll hear a click when you push. Sometimes it can take a while. There you go, and that's on. My teeth are lined up at the top. My fabric is almost lined up along the side. I can live with that. It's probably only out by about a millimeter. Bring the slide all the way to the other side. Line up your fabric and your zip end. And I'll trim that so that they're both the same size as well. And this is why I like to leave an extra tail on the zip. Bring this slider back a little. Grab the other one and we'll do the same again. Curved edge facing. And if you line that up at the top properly, that's clicked in place. I can close that. You can see that's even at the top. When you come down and bring the two ends to meet, you don't want to have any puckering or one side of the zip sticking out further than the other. They look to be meeting really well in the center with no teeth sticking out. So I don't have to redo this. If this was wrong, I'd take the slide off and try again until I had this sitting nice and evenly. I'll bring the 
sliders into the center and leave a bit of an opening here just in case I forget to open it later it'll be easier for me to get into the bag. I am going to quickly go and sew just across the ends here that way that'll secure the teeth and the zipper tape isn't going to come apart if I accidentally pull anything later so I'll fix that and then I can figure out what the next part is. And now that that is secure at both ends I can trim off my tape and I have straightened the edge just a little bit. All right that's been sewn in at the end there. My gusset is completely ready. I'm going to set this aside for now and work on the lining. Let's grab our lining piece. We're going to place some pockets onto the ends like we did on the outer fabric. So these are my ends that will come up and then we've got the back and front. We need two pieces for a pocket. You'll want 11 by 18 inches, which is 28 by 46 centimeters. Now you'll see that my fabric has a join in it. I didn't have enough fabric to make the pocket, so I've just joined two pieces together to make that 18 inches, or you can just cut two pieces that are nine inches. It really doesn't make much difference. So if you're joining two pieces together, go and do that and then bring the right sides together and sew that long edge down as well. So we're going to be making a tube and if you're just using one full length of fabric, fold it in half and sew that 11 inch line in place. So I'll quickly go and do that now and I'll be right back. So what I've got here is a tube of fabric. Turn that the right way out, press your seams to one side, doesn't matter which side, and then just line up the fabric along that seam line and you can go and top stitch one long edge. And that's what I've done here. I've just top stitched right along the top edge here. That will be the top of the pocket. And this is the bottom section of the pocket, which will be stitched into the lining. Once I've top stitched that, I'll grab my lining. This is one of the ends here. I'll just line up my ruler. You can make a mark and line up the bottom of the pocket one and a half inches or three centimeters from that line we've marked. What I need to do now is stitch along the bottom edge and secure that in place along the side. So both of these pockets are ready, we'll go and sew those up. I don't need to go and do a double row of stitching along the bottom of this, it's just lining. Uh, but of course, if you feel you need to, or you want to be consistent, you can go ahead and do that. And the only reason I'm sewing the fabric to the side seam is to make it easier for myself to line up my fabric later. So all I'm doing is sewing that really close to the edge. It doesn't need to have my one centimetre seam allowance. All right, that pocket is in place. What I should have done before I stitched the two side seams in place is put my Velcro in. I've got a couple of strips here that are six centimeters or two and a half inches and I just want to place that to the inside of the top section of the pocket here. So what I've done here is positioned my Velcro half an inch from the top edge of the pocket which is about one and a half centimeters just on the inside there. I've used some double-sided tape to secure that in place and I'll do the same for the other side. Remove that tape and then I can just position that where it needs to go. And like I said, I should have sewn these side seams up after I had done this Velcro. So I can separate these carefully now. There's enough room inside this pocket for me to quickly go and sew those in place now. So I will go and do those at both ends. If you're going to put Velcro in, Put the Velcro in before you sew up the side seams. It's just a little bit quicker. I'll put those bits of Velcro in and I'll be right back. Okay, now that the pockets are done for the sides, we are ready to start putting this together. We can start closing up our bag. We've got the pocket wing here and this is either the front or the back. We're going to bring this side over to this side. Line that up and clip it together. And then we'll do the same on this side. So we'll bring this edge and this edge together. These are the right sides. 
and we'll also do that for the other side as well. So this end will do the same. All right, once we've put our inner bag together, find a side that you'd like to use for the opening and remove some of the clips along the edge there. So I'm going to leave quite a large opening. I'll only sew together about an inch and a half at the top and an inch and a half or so at the bottom. And then the rest of it I'm going to leave open, but I'll secure the stitches with a couple of rows of backstitch just so that when I pull the bag through and all of its stiffness, it doesn't tear the fabric. So one side will sew top and bottom, leave a big opening, and then the other three sides will sew right along the edges. I'll do the one with the opening first so that I don't forget. And I'm using a one centimetre seam allowance here. And then I'll come right down to the other end, close to the bottom. And I can sew up all the other sides. Let's take our gusset piece and I just want to mark a small curve on each corner of the top. Just a small curve, doesn't need to be big at all. And this is only about one and a half centimetres or five eighths of an inch from the corner. It's just going to make it easier to sew the side seams into the curve rather than having sharp corners. And I'm just going to trim that. Make sure your lining is sitting underneath as well. And cut those layers out together. Set that aside for a moment. Grab your lining again. And we're going to find the centre position of all four sides of our bag. This is a side seam here. Bring those edges together. Place a pin in there. Go to the other end. Pop a pin in there as well. And then the front and back. So I have the centre marked in the front or the back both sides and also on the sides. The lining for the gusset was moving around a little bit too much for me so I've decided to stitch that in place just along the long edges there. It'll make it a lot easier for me with the next step. Fold this in half and we want to find the centre. And with the centre marked on our lining piece we can take this and place it inside our bag. So what I've got here is the right side facing up and the right side of the lining facing inside the bag. We've got our printed side of the bag faced out. Line up the pin on the long edge with the pin that we have on the long edge of our lining and you can pin that together or clip it. We'll do the same on the other side. And then on the end, the centre pin that we've marked here, we're going to line up with the centre of the zip. And the same at the other end. And with all of our centre positions marked, we can now ease this fabric in around the entire gusset. So where we've got the curve here, we can take the side seam, line that up as well, and then you can clip together those edges and just try and have everything lined up as nicely as you can. And you might just need to manipulate that curve as you go around. So I'll do that for the entire bag. And then I think I'll leave this open up to about here. So you can go to the other end, line up that corner with the curve. Just gives you a good guide to line everything else up. 
and that way you can ease everything else in so that it sits nicely. Okay, that's all been clipped together. I'm ready to sew all the way around the entire top section. Let's go and sew this up. Now we've already got an opening in our side seam, so we don't need to worry about anything here. And I'm going to use a one centimeter seam allowance again, which is three eighths of an inch. And sew all the way around. And I've just realized I don't like sewing with the lining faced up because there's too much movement. I'll flip this around so that I have the outer fabric faced up and I'll sew that. So as I come to the corner, I just want to make sure I don't have any of this lining sitting in my way. And I'll go slowly, but I'm going to lift my work up and move that lining out of the way underneath. Just make sure it's still lined up on the corner. And if I need to, I can bring that out a bit. I'm going to secure where the zip is. Okay, the top section of the bag is secured to the lining and don't forget we've got our opening just here so we'll be able to hopefully get everything through. And now we need to close up the side seam of our outer bag and then attach that to the gusset as well. Not much to go now. Have your outer fabric faced up. And then we're going to line up these side seams exactly the same way we did earlier. But in this case, we don't need to leave an opening on the side. Now, because there is so much bulk in the fabric and we've got the bulk of the pockets as well, I'm going to go and stitch every seam twice. When I sew the gusset in place later, I'll also stitch that twice as well. So I'll go and clip all of these edges together. And once I've done that, we can sew up the sides. All right, I reckon this could just about float. <laughs> it almost looks like the arc, doesn't it? We've now got all the side seams clipped together. There is a lot of bulk in here, so you really do need to make sure that you have a strong enough needle to go through it. You'll remember on the outer pocket here, I've used that stiff Peltex to eliminate some of the bulk in here. You could just use an interfacing in the pocket instead. Uh, because of what I do have here is three layers of Paltex that is quite thick. My machine will cope with it fine, but some people might find it difficult. Let's sew up all these side seams. And remember, I'm going to be sewing my seams twice. And anywhere that I go over some extra bulk will also be reinforced. So that's what I'll do for all of my seams. Well, let me just say that this bag has been stitched together so securely, I don't think anybody could tear it apart. Uh, this is going to be huge. Let's finish this up. We can leave this section inside out. With our lining fabric faced so that the wrong side is to the outside, fold that in half and mark the center once again. You could have earlier just put a couple of notches in the fabric. So I've got the center marked on the gusset and we'll do the same for our bag. Bring these side edges together. And the same here. Okay, 
let's get the last bit in. Take the top of your bag and place that faced down like this. So your lining is just going to be sitting on the top. We're going to line up this print with this one and we'll line up that centre marking just like we did earlier. And we've got the lining here stitched closed, so that's fine. At the end, we'll line up the centre of the zip with the centre of our bag. Do that for the side as well. And we'll finish up with the other end. Then we can put the corners together. I think I'll open my seams at the corner. I'll see how I go and ease that in. Keep the lining out of the way there and we'll just clip all of those edges together making sure that you don't have any ripples and once we've done that we can take this back to the machine and sew it closed. You know, I almost had a meltdown. I thought, how am I going to turn this bag the right way around? I didn't think I'd left it opening, but it is here somewhere. I'm sure of it. Yes, right here. So this small space is where we've got to get this whole bag <laughs> pulled through. All right, if it's not going to be fun sewing this up, it'll certainly be fun trying to get it through that opening. Let's see how we go. Everything's been clipped together. I'm going to sew all the way around. I'll check it to see if everything's lined up and that there are no puckers and then I will sew all the way around again. I'm expecting I might have a little trouble when I get to the corners around here. So as I come to the side seam, I might just go forward and back and forward a couple of times, end the work and then come around to the other side and do the same because I'm not sure that I'll be able to come around in a curve but I'm going to have a look and see when I get to the machine but you'll see what I'm doing soon anyway. Before I set up the camera again have a look how big this is against my machine. I've somehow got to get this uh, great big bag underneath my presser foot here and stitch this all the way around. Wish me luck. As I said I'm going to be stitching this twice so I'm not really too worried about what happens on the first round. I just want to get everything stitched in place and then I can see what I need to tidy up. I have to scrunch up the whole bag so that I can actually fit it in my workspace. So I'm coming up to the end here. I'm going to stitch to the stitching line of the fabric underneath and back stitch and end that and then come around the other side and I'll start sewing from that seam line again. This is the top centre where the zip is. I'm going to go over that a few times. And this is the next corner. As I was sewing it around here, this seam was facing toward me. Now this seam is going to be behind me or behind the fabric. And I'll start sewing at that seam again. It's just like doing Y seams, only there's a lot more thickness and I can't really see what I'm doing. So you can see I'm coming up to the corner again. I've got that side seam along here. I'm just moving the fabric forward. 
I'll stitch up to the seam line. This one that was folded forward will now go to the back as I come around. And I'm coming up to my last corner. Well, that took absolutely ages. It was a real workout trying to hold that bag in place. I've gone all the way around once. I am going to go around this again another time and I'll just double check those corners as I go. It's going to be a lot quicker now because I don't have to worry about clips and making sure everything's lining up because everything should be right. All right, now for the fun part. We get to turn this the right way out. Uh, I am looking forward to this. I said no girl ever. All right, there's my little opening. We're going to get this whole bag through there. Now, if you don't have confidence in that, uh, what you can do, and if I can't get through it, I will do this. I would find the bottom of my bag and just pinch that out. And it's probably easier to do this. I would place a crease in the edge here. And then what I would do is start around about here, right on the fold, just like I was doing a dart. I would stitch along and start tapering out about half a centimetre or so, or quarter of an inch. Taper out, come to around about here and do a back stitch. So say I stitched from here to here. I can do the same at this end here. I would start at nothing and then come out a little bit and do another back stitch along here. What I would do then is open up the folded edge of fabric from here to here and this will give you a false seam. I'm going to try and go in through the opening here first. If I can't do that then I will actually do this. This area here allows you to have a much bigger opening and then you can stitch it closed. I do that in lots of my giant utility bags. Okay let's get in here. I can open my zip all the way now and then I've just got to start bringing the bag through. It's only difficult because the Peltex is so stiff. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to make it. <laughs> I can hear seams popping. That's okay, there's still plenty of give in there. <laughs> I reckon I've won. Okay, I've managed to turn everything out. All I need to do is poke out all the corners. Hopefully everything looks good. Okay, I can see a problem. At the moment, everything's looking really good by way of construction. I'm really happy with that. You just want to check your corners and make sure they've all been caught properly. And three of them, oh no, I've got to go back in here as well. So this one didn't catch. I'll have to take the seam in a little bit there. And this one here didn't catch either. So it's going to fray along there. I'll go and fix up these two corners. I'll just increase that seam allowance on this side and everything else looks pretty good. But I will double check the seam allowance on the corners at the other end as well. Okay, I've checked all my seams. I'm happy with everything. Now all I need to do is close up that opening. So I'll just pinch the edges together and I'll stitch this closed all the way along the inside edge. Okay, we are completely finished. I've popped a couple of little zipper pulls on. I buy these in bulk from Amazon. Uh, AliExpress and Alibaba. I'll pop an Amazon link in the description if you want to find those yourself. On the outside we've got a pocket at the front, a pocket at the back, a pocket on the side and another pocket on the other side as well. I've got my label on the front there as well so we all know that it's mine. I made it. <laughs> Get your hands off. On the inside we've got lots of space in there 
and then we've got a couple of extra pockets on the very end now I've chosen to put my pockets on the end because Chris and I we go to a lot of sporting events and we're always trying to find a secure place to put our wallets purses painkillers by putting it right on the very end of our bag if anybody did happen to you know look into your bag all they're seeing is your sports gear they're not seeing any personal belongings not that that ever happens but you always want to have a little bit of extra security so lots of space inside I do have to give the edges a nice press just so they'll sit properly. I haven't made my handles too long. I usually carry them over my arm, but you could easily go and extend this as well if you wanted to. But apart from that, everything's completely done. All right, so let me answer the first question. No, I'm not going to be selling any of these in the shop. Could you imagine me trying to fight for space in the shop with Chris to make room for a bunch of these big bags. This is absolutely huge. It's going to be a one-off. I've decided I'm going to keep it for myself. I want a new table tennis bag and it's kind of cool with all the circles on it as well. So I'm going to use this as my sports bag. Definitely not going to be making these to sell. It's way too big, takes up way too much time and I'm happy to have just made one. I do apologize for the length of this video there are so many elements to it that I didn't feel like I could chop things out. Some things needed to be shown a little bit more than once. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've had many requests for really big bags like this. I consider my mission complete. This is an absolute giant. I'm going to put the measurements for the handles that I've used in here, but if you do want longer handles, just add some length to that. I'm perfectly happy with my handles like this because I do just carry my bag over my arm like this most of the time. In the side seam, you could also go and put a really nice long extra strap that you can carry over your shoulder. I didn't want that, tends to weigh my shoulders down. I'm more than happy just to carry it over my arm. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time with something a bit smaller. Bye for now.